Today, we're going to take the AI agent we've been working on to create tasks for us in Asana and turn it into a full-blown task management AI agent. This thing is seriously powerful and has the potential to save hours and hours of work. Now, what does that entail exactly? Well, I'm just going to go ahead and show you. I typically wait until the end of my video to show the code that I create for the masterclass. But guys, this Asana chatbot is insane. I need to show it to you now so you can see the power of what we are about to build. This thing is so great that originally I created it just to demonstrate AI agent topics to you guys, but I'm literally going to start using this now to manage my days. And so this hooks into Asana, which is my favorite task management platform. And it can do literally anything that I need to do in Asana. It can create projects for me, which is the highest level of organization of tasks in Asana. It can search through projects. It can search for tasks across projects. It can create tasks, delete them, update them, mark them as complete. Anything I need to do to manage my day, I can do with this chatbot that interacts with Asana for me. It is so cool. So let me go ahead and just show you guys some of the really powerful things that it can do. Um, so one thing that you do a lot with AI is you have it help you with research. And so I can ask it something like, what are the top 10 technologies to learn as a software developer getting into AI? And it'll give me a nice list here. I don't know if I'll necessarily agree with it. But just for demonstration purposes, I mean, you do this a lot where you're going to ask AI for a list of something. But now I can take this a lot further, something you can't just do a GPT. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say, OK, great. Now create a project in Asana for me called AI Learning. Put each of these uh, 10 texts as a task to learn them all due by Wednesday. Boom, there we go. A very complex ask from the AI here, because it has to make a project, go into it, create the tasks for each of these technologies, and actually create a title for each task, and determine the due date based on the date of you know, what the current date is that I gave it, and when next Wednesday is going to be. And it has to do all of that with a single prompt that I give it. And so it takes a little bit here, because it has to go into Asana and do all these things. But you're going to see here that it will do it flawlessly. It even gives me a link to every single task that it creates within this new uh, AI learning project that it made as well. And so we can actually go over to Asana now and see what it looks like. And so there's a new project here, AI learning. I click into this and boom, there we go. We got a task for each of the technologies that it's suggested to learn uh, from that little research that we did with the AI. And so now I can go ahead and knock these out, mark them as complete, or I can continue to use the Asana chatbot and manage all of this for me. All right, so even continuing on here, I can say something like, okay, thank you. I have learned Python now. So now we're gonna actually ask it without even really being explicit to mark this task as complete. So it says, great job learning Python. The task learn Python has been marked as complete and your Asana project, great. And we'll, we'll check that out in a little bit, but now I wanna say, I don't want to learn um, mathematics and statistics anymore. You probably should, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And so I want it to actually delete the task for me. And there you go, it's been removed. And so I don't want to have to explicitly say that I want it to delete that task. Um, but using natural language, it can pick up on the fact that I do want to do that. And so it takes that action for me, which is super sweet. Uh, create a, another task, but also if you want to, you can explicitly say, like create another task to um, learn GPT, something like that, learn how to use the API. And let's wait a little bit, get the response. Boom, there we go, it's added to my AI learning projects. Let's go back over to Asana and check out all of these things. So first of all, learn Python, boom, that is marked as complete. Uh, we no longer see learn mathematics and statistics because it removed that one. And then we have the new task of learn GPT. And so using this chatbot, I'm able to do literally anything where I don't actually have to use the Asana UI, which is great. I still might want to use it, but I can also just have conversations with my AI agent and have it do things for me for task management. It is so, so powerful. So let's go ahead and dive into how we actually create this. All right, so now we get to actually dive into the code and soup up our AI agent so that it can manage everything in Asana for us. So the code that you're looking at right here, this is about what we had in the last masterclass video, 
where we have a Streamlit UI with a chatbot using GPT or Claude that can create tasks in Asana for us. So we have the tool to create Asana tasks, just that one right now. We have the function with prompting AI with all the streaming that we set up. And then we have the main function that defines the Streamlit UI. And now we get to create a bunch of new tools to go along with this one to do all the different things in Asana that I demonstrated just a little bit ago. And so the first thing to say, like usual, there's going to be a link to the GitHub for this code in the description of the video. So you can go ahead and check that out. The folder for this masterclass video specifically is for task management agent. Uh, like usual, I have an example environment variable file. It's basically the same except we're working in a whole Asana workplace now instead of just a single project. So this environment variable is different. Keep that in mind if you're following along. And then like usual, the requirements.txt file as well. So you have all the Python packages and the versions you need for those too. The version of Asana did change a little bit as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, you need to upgrade Asana from what we had in the last video. Otherwise, the deletion of tasks will not work with one of the tools we'll add. So another important thing to keep in mind. So with that, we can go ahead and get started. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create a new variable that's assigned to the workplace ID that we have as an environment variable. So before we just had the project ID and we are creating all of our tasks in that one project, but now we need to go a step higher to the whole workplace because we can manage different projects within our workspace now. And so that's something important to keep in mind. We also souped up our create Asana task function to accept a project ID as a parameter as well so that our bot can create tasks in different projects. And so that's the one change to this tool. Other than that, the one to create tasks is exactly the same as what we had before. So now we get to go ahead and actually create our new tools, our shiny new tools. The first one we're going to create is a tool to get our projects in our Asana workspace. And so you can see here that it uses that variable that is based on the workspace ID environment variable and uh, a couple other parameters here. And then we just fetch that again, just using the Asana SDK. So the setup here is very similar between all the different tools here where we create our options, invoke the Asana API, and then either return the response as a string or the error message as a string. And then we have a doc string, just like we have with our create Asana task function, which tells the AI agent how to use this function, when to use it, and what kind of parameters to give, which in the case of get Asana projects is none. We don't need any parameters there. And it even tells the agent how exactly it's gonna get the response from invoking this function. So it knows what to expect, what information it's gonna get very exactly out of calling this tool. All right, so the next tool we're going to add is the one to create an Asana project. And so Asana projects themselves, just like tasks and have due dates, optionally. And so we have that, and then we have the project name as well. And so I'll go ahead and create the body to get that data, and then create that project within the workspace we have here. Nice and easy. The next one we have is to get Asana tasks. And so this one, this has to be once the agent knows what project to search within, because we are getting the tasks from a specific project ID. And then just like with creating or getting the projects, rather getting the tasks, this tool also tells the AI through the doc string exactly what information it's going to get for each task. So it knows what to expect when it calls this tool. So we get the options here and then we invoke the API again and return the result, which is including all the tasks in an array. Now, one thing to note here is that this does not handle pagination. If you have more than 50 Asana tasks in one project, it won't return all of them. It's very easy to use the Asana SDK to handle pagination because you get like a token for the next page that you can reinvoke the task fetch. And so if you wanted to really, really soup this up, you can do that. I just wanted to keep this function simple for now. So that is getting Asana tasks. The next one we have is updating Asana tasks. And so given the ID of a single task and a data dictionary, it will update the task based on what we have in data. And so this one is actually a really cool function because data is a very generic variable, um, but we can tell it in the doc string exactly how to format this data dictionary. And even with something kind of vague like this, where we have to be very descriptive and need something very specific for this object, the agent still does really well with this, which I think is super cool. And so this data dictionary is used to either update the 
um, completion status of the task, like true or false, is it completed or not, as well as the due date. And so I can actually say like, hey, I don't want this to be due on Wednesday anymore. Can you push it out to Friday? I had other things come up. And it'll be able to do that as well for any tasks that you give it. Very, very nice. The next thing we're going to do is add a tool to delete a task. And so this one's really simple. You just give it the ID of a task. And so at this point, either you're going to give an ID directly or much more likely is you're going to have it search through tasks in a project so that it has all the information like the ID, like you fetch here. And then you tell it to delete that one and it would correlate that information it has previously with all the tasks and their IDs with the name of the one you specifically want to delete. Map those and then use the ID to call this function and delete the task like we saw earlier with the mathematics and statistics uh, learning step that we deleted in Asana earlier. So that is our delete task. And so now what we're going to do here in our mapping of available functions is we're just going to start adding all of these tools here. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. All right. So now we have all of the names of functions mapped to the actual object, the function object in the script just like we have with the create Asana task. And that is literally it. We don't have to do anything else in our function to prompt AI. And the reason for that is we dynamically fetch all the tools that are available through this mapping. And then we bind that into our chatbot. So it's so nice how easy it is to add these tools. All of the work really goes into creating these functions and then defining the doc string in a way that allows the AI to understand properly when and how to use these functions. This honestly is the most important part of the prompt to the AI is these doc strings because if it doesn't know how to use these tools well, it's going to use them when it shouldn't and it won't use them when it should. And so this is really, really important. Um, and so, yeah, the very last thing that we're going to do here is just add on to the system prompt here because we want to give a little bit of instruction to the agent on how to manage all of the information it's going to be receiving about projects and tasks. And so one thing, for example, you never give IDs to the user since those are just for you to keep track of. One thing that it likes to do without this added to the system prompt is when it lists out all the tasks or projects, it gives the IDs of them as well. And as a user, just using a chatbot, you don't necessarily want to see those IDs. And so this is just to give an example of how you can add things into the system prompt to help it deal with all the information it receives from these tools and what to actually give to the user. And so with that, we are absolutely done. And you can go ahead and run this just like we did before with the streamlit run command. And you can play with the chatbot, go through the things that I demonstrated earlier and take it much, much further as well, because this can do so much for you. So I'm literally going to be using this every day. It is just fantastic. So that is everything for the AI agent to manage all your tasks. It's super powerful already. But we're going to continue to make it even more powerful through the rest of the masterclass. So just a little bit of a teaser for what's coming next. We're going to dive into RAG, which is Retrieval Augmented Generation. It's taking external knowledge and bringing it into a chatbot. So taking your files in Google Drive or your database and feeding that information into the AI based on what it thinks it needs to give better responses to the user. And so what we're going to be developing in this masterclass is basically what we're going to do is make it possible to record a meeting upload it to Google Drive, create a transcript of it, and then take action items from that transcript and create tasks in Asana with it. And so we're going to be connecting everything we're building with RAG with this Asana chatbot into something that is even more powerful. So I hope you're looking forward to that. If you found this video useful, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next one.